Okay, we are live. We are live. And we are alive. Isn't this a good day to be alive? But we got to let it breathe. Hang tight. Hang 10. Hang tight. And we are good. So welcome in, everybody. It is the Mile High Huddle Podcast, and I'm your host, Chad Jensen, with me, my fellow football priest. You know him. You love him. Zach Kelberman. Zach, uh, maybe it doesn't take a rocket scientist to deduce the veracity of this possibility I'm going to present to you here. But what would you say if a very well-known, deeply rooted Broncos insider of many decades were to claim that Brandon McManus is, quote, not completely safe relative to his roster spot? What would you think if a guy, I don't know, Woody Page, maybe somebody like that reported such a thing? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. And based on the comments we got on social media from the tweet of the story, everyone saying, you know, he wasn't living up to the contract. We can read off the cap implications and how much money the Broncos can save. But it boils down to this. He fancies himself as a team leader of the last link to SB 50, the NFL PA rep, whatever. He was 28 of 36 last year. He was 26 of 31 the year before 28 of 34 the year before that 29 of 34 the year before that. You see where I'm going with this, Chad? He has not been Mick money in quite some time. And the NFL, if you can get younger and cheaper and better, you take that opportunity not saying he should be cut, not saying he will be cut, but if he is and the Broncos decide to move on, no one should be surprised. And it's not just that he sometimes misses or he misses too many. Right. I mean, obviously that's not good. That's suboptimal. But, Zach, the problem is, uh, and this is, this is an issue you and I have been complaining about for years now, literally, is that when the chips are down, you it's like flip a coin, dude. It could be a... It could be an extra point to take the lead or tie the game, and you have that feeling in your gut, flip a coin. It could be, you know, to, to win the game or lose the game, you know, last possession, whatever, flip a coin. Plus, then you, you're like, all right, well, he's got that big leg, you know. It's, it's great to have a weapon that can connect from such deep distances. Well, he's not very accurate from deep. He's mm -hmm. got the leg, but how much does that really serve you, Zach, if you can't be accurate, and especially in critical moments? Really, really great point. You know, I have the stats in front of me from 50 plus last year. He was eight of 13. I don't have the splits as to uh, what games were at home versus away, but you, you got to be more reliable than that. The year before he was five of nine, the year before he was 10 of 15. This is all from 50 plus. I mean, he's good inside of 49. He's pretty clutch there, but he's being paid to make all of the kicks from all of the distances, not just, you know, a certain set. So I would uh, argue as well that he has not justified the contract the Broncos gave him. I'm curious if Matt Prater is still available. I, I would search it right now, but I'm afraid of bogging down my uh, I got you. bandwidth uh, because I've had that problem lately when I have StreamYard open. Uh, because that's a guy who not only has the leg, Zach, but, but ice cold freaking water veins type thing. That dude was always money for the Denver Broncos. Think of all those um, iconic Tim Tebow comebacks uh, in 2011. Yeah. So many of those were only made possible by the clutch kicking of Matt Prater when the chips were down. Dude likes to, you know, have a drink or two here and there. So you got to be careful of that. And hopefully he's, you know, maybe that's that's in his past. But. Matt Prater, when free agency opened, he was available. And even Mike Evans of MHH, he was like, yeah, go sign this guy. And I was like, I concur. Yeah, I was going to say pretty tactfully, ice water is not the only thing running through his veins. He's known to throw back a cold one. Um, but we're being informed, uh, Scott's telling us he re-signed with Arizona for two years, $7.5 Not totally surprising. You can argue the Broncos never should have moved on in the first place. He's been a reliable kicker uh, in the time since, in, in post-Denver time. We have a very dedicated fan. I want to shout out Michael. LOL. I made a promise to not miss this live stream. Well, we're glad you're with us, big dog. Thank, Thank you for Michael. being with us. And all of you that uh, are joining us tonight, including Dylan, who's reminding everybody to make sure you like the, pay the, the stream, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. If you really love us, you want to show some, some big love, share it out there. It's a great thing to help us grow and reach other fans uh, organically. Um, Shout out also, I see uh, David El Bronco, Kevin Gray, Michaela Israel's in the house. What's up? Uh, we had a great time chatting with you and your boy. 
the other day. Keith's in the house. What's up, dude? Uh, yeah, sorry, we were running a little bit late tonight. Um, you know, charge it to the game. Um, appreciate your guys' patience. Uh, Zach, though, uh, on that same subject, so it was a it was a very interesting column that Woody Page dropped at the Denver uh, the Denver Gazette. I, I have to be careful not to get it mixed with the Colorado Springs Gazette and the Denver Post. So it's like, you know, it's kind of got to be careful with your language. But mm -hmm. one of the other things that was newsworthy, and I wrote about this today as well at milehighhuddle.com, was, you know, we've heard this we've guessed this we've kind of read between some of the lines but according to woody page george the 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 ultimate power where the buck stops outside of ownership is sean payton if george payton wants to make a personnel move he has to get it approved quote mm -hmm. by sean payton and so it makes you wonder okay if that's the case some of the tinfoil hat stuff we have talked about in recent months since Peyton was hired is how long will George Peyton survive in the job? Could he be like a Brian Zanders from 11 years ago? And after all the work and toil of the draft is done, could he maybe be dispatched after that? I have a, I have a take on that, but I want your thoughts. Well, who says he can't be a Mickey Loomis? No one's really talking about that scenario where it's a general manager that knows how to scout, knows how to acquire talent, is aggressive in building a roster, and he's working hand-in-hand and -hand doing so with Sean Payton. Sean has talked about so many times since becoming Broncos coach the relationship and how important it is in the front office between coach and general manager. So the people that want George Payton gone, I think, are being a little... Um, I don't know, impulsive considering the talent evaluation abilities he can bring to the table and also having another voice in the room, not just putting it all on Sean Payton, letting the coach coach and cook with the groceries, not have to buy them as well. If I'm Sean Payton and I at least respect George Payton's ability to do his job, even if I'm the most power-hungry, uh, ambitious head coach under the sun, why would I want to make my job more difficult, even if I have final say? Exactly. I want to be able to just focus on the coaching aspect, and then when it comes time for those critical decisions, who we sign, who we draft, let the let George Payton do all that grind. Mm -hmm. That's a 9-to-5, 365, if not more than 9-to-5, but that's a grind. That's an 8-hour-plus grind, 365 days a, w uh, a year. Let George do that. And I'll still have my cake and eat it too. I'll focus on my coaching. I'll do my thing, get this team out of the doldrums and still Zach curate who comes and goes from the roster. I still have that final say makes perfect sense. So long as he is getting along with George Payton and so long as you know, he, it's not just a matter Zach of chemistry and getting along like he did with Mickey Loomis in New Orleans all those years, but also are you sharing a brain? Do you, do you trust his, his insight? Do you trust his discernment? etc. And so long as they win, I mean, no one's going to care and they're not going to certainly care about having a title or having some sort of power struggle if the Broncos are finally back on the right track. But it's it's also naive to think if the Broncos went out and courted Sean Payton the way they did, handed him $18 million a year, traded a first and second round pick, and we thought he wasn't going to have final say. We thought he wasn't going to step on George Payton's toes. And listen, even in a worst case scenario where George Payton is marginalized to a talent evaluator, he's a hell of a talent eval evaluator that I'd rather have inside the building than outside of it. Yeah. Personally, I would be absolutely shocked and stunned if the Broncos were to part ways with George Payton for what it's worth, Marcus Lewis henna from across the pond, throwing down some stars. Appreciate you, big dog. He says, Hey guys, looking forward to the draft, love and respect to you and all Broncos fans. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. Kind of like last year, you know, not having a first or second round pick, uh, unfortunately kind of saps some of the joy that we have, uh, especially the common fan and by the common fan. I just mean like, you guys are the most hardcore dedicated of the dedicated Broncos fans. Like you're in the off season listening to podcasts. That's how you're dedicated. But like say people like my old man, Mark Jensen, shout out, you know, he'll pay attention when the draft comes around, when there's actual news and then he'll watch the games. Uh, he's probably not reading anything about the draft because he's like bummed out. There's no first round pick. Why should I care now? Everybody else, you're hardcore. You care about, 
the third round picks, the fourth round picks, the seventh, who are we going to sign in college free agency? That's why we love you. You're, you're, you're psychos like us. Lawrence, bro, what up, guys? If I were you, I wouldn't worry about McManus. He's McMoney. Man, that guy's been our leading scorer for like sure. six seasons. Yeah. Well, that is, you know, part of the problem is, uh, I guess, maybe you could argue anyway, Zach, that could be part of the problem. Uh, unique prepping in the house. What's up? Smouse, Zachary Smouse in the house. Great, great to see you, big dog. Uh, one of our longtime Super Chat superstars. But, Zach, I guess it's true. Brandon McManus, the Bronx have relied on him too much for offense in recent years. That's a big part of the problem. And what's worse is you're relying on someone who's not all that reliable. So if he's your leading scorer and he's still missing all these field goals, it shows you how bad the Broncos are as a collective. In terms of the draft really quickly, maybe the Broncos do have a first round pick when it's all said and done. If they trade a receiver, maybe they do have a second round pick. We don't know that, but we do know it's in Kansas City this year. And hopefully the Broncos make some noise in enemy territory. Scott brings up a good uh, point here on the topic of McManus from which ranges he's good, from which ranges you can't really trust him. So his money zone is 40 to 49 yards last season, 10 for 10. From 50 to 59, he was 8 for 11. The problem, and I, I concur with Mr. Producer here, is that he went 10 of 13, Zach, from 20 to 39. Yep. So – you know, those are what you, what you hear the color uh, commentary guys go. All right, McManus lining up for a chip shot or whatever, right? You gotta. Those have to be automatic. Those have to be like you don't even think about it. And the only time one of those might be missed, Zach, is if the long snapper botched a block or a guy just on the other side made a just straight made a great play and got a finger on it or something. Like otherwise, you shouldn't be missing those kicks. No, he's not Justin Tucker. He's actually a far cry from Justin Tucker. I know Tucker makes six a year, but McManus is making 4.3. So he's almost in that realm, and yet he's so unreliable from short and long. Scott's absolutely right. When you've been as bad as an offense as the, as the Broncos have been, you cannot leave any points on the field. Hopefully, Chad, it won't matter with Sean Payton in town now. And, you know, you go back through the mental Rolodex, there were some critical games where, you know, the Broncos, their margin for error was always, has always been these last seven years so razor thin razor. that there were games that they either would have tied or, or given themselves more of a shot, maybe in overtime or whatever, or won the game, if not for a McManus flub. Deanna, the Lady D in the house, love you, so generous, bona fide Mount Rushmore MHH superstar. Uh, so generous. Thank you, Lady thank D. You, we need man. it. We got to keep the lights on even in the off season. So thank you so much. She says, evening, Chad, Zach, and Scott. Happy to catch you live tonight. I think they will both work together, the Paytons, with no issues. Super excited for this season to start MHH for Life. Bridge the Gap. By the way, your, your uh, CD will be going out next week because it's getting signed. All the dudes are in town, and that will get signed. So that will be sh shipping to you, Deanna, this week. But uh, she's... Uh, She's feeling like the Peyton boys, Zach, although phonetically it sounds the same, it's spelled differently, but they're going to get along just fine. I've just moved on to calling them Sean and George a lot easier that way. And if anyone's worried, if they were worried about a head coach coming in, commandeering power or making George Peyton irrelevant, that would have been more Jim Harbaugh to me. He had that. I, I don't know the PG word. You know what I'm trying to say for the, uh, the, the craving for a certain you know, position of power. And I don't think Sean Payton has, I think he does want to coach. He missed having that year off. And he said himself, he deserves to be highly compensated for what he does. He realizes how good of a coach he is, but he can be even better. And the team can be better if he has someone he can work hand in hand with. And at this point so far, considering how they handled free agency, they're working really well together. Why fix what's not broken? And they, you know, they're serving at the pleasure of ownership, both of them. And Greg Penner has been, if you read that column from Woody Page, it's a very good read. I suggest everybody check it out. It's We link to it at MHH in both the articles. But um, G uh, Greg Penner, pardon me, has done – he's worked really hard to be as quickly educated on this NFL thing um, okay. and make all the resources of ownership available to uh, yeah. George and Sean. Phil in Tucson, what's up, big dog? Love you. Thank you. He says, good evening, Chad, Zach, and Deacon Scott. I know it's not as, <clears throat> pardon me, exciting drafting late. So is anyone going to the draft? Hashtag go Broncos and Buckham, baby, with a B. 
Buckham. Zach, um, you want to go to the draft? Always. It's in Kansas it was, City. It was a blast last year going with you. I would love to represent MHH, and I have a funny feeling we'll be out there, so it should be a good time. Um, we'll, we'll see on that, Phil. To be decided, we will announce on that. But uh, I think we expect the uh, media credential uh, application window to open this week now that the annual league meetings are in the books. So stay tuned on that, brother. Um, okay, let me jump into the chat, Say, see what uh, is on everybody's mind. And by the way, tonight, guys, uh, we started a little bit late. We'll probably keep it pretty tight. So any topics specifically burning you want us to get to, uh, make sure you do get it in the chat, and uh, we will do our best to get to them before we dip on out of here. Um, the meet and greet, the meet and greet. People want to know about the meet and greet. We don't know yet. We can't announce on that yet. There will be a meet and greet, guys, another MHH uh, event at the stadium. But until we know what the schedule is, we're not sure. It will be in September if that helps you at all. We like to do it er as early in the season as possible so as to maximize the likelihood of it being decent weather. So, you know, nobody's disincentivized to come hang out because it's 18 degrees and snowing like one game that I, I went to against the Patriots back in 2015 and it was on Sunday night football and CJ Anderson. Mm -hmm. That's right. That game, you know, no one wants to hang out in those elements. So we want to keep it in September, but until we know the order of the season, we know who the opponents are. We just don't know the order yet. But as soon as we know that literally within the next pod or two, we will have that out for everybody to start planning around because Zach, we know how many, of our great community members actually jump on a plane, jump in their cars, come from near and far yeah. uh, to hang out and be a part of that. So stay tuned. Mike, love you, big dog. Good to see you. Yeah, just like Michael Ronquillo. We also know, Chad, another thing, the Broncos will win that game because with MHH in attendance, the Broncos are 2-0 and at the meet and greet. So we're looking forward to making it 3-0 and later this fall. I still have never witnessed a loss in the stadium in person, and I've been going to games – Denver Bronco home games uh, since I was 15 for what it's worth. So um, we'll schedule pro, a Chiefs game then. To be I know. Safe. I know. Really test that mojo, right? Yeah. Let's see how, how much truth there is to it. Um, Pearl wants to know, will the Broncos draft a kicker? Zach, you know what? That's the thing is, and I was writing about this today is, you know, it's one, it's, it's one thing for Woody Page is as, embedded as he is we know his his roots as an insider are deep but it's one thing to write eh, you know things could change for McManus he's not completely safe but right now he's the only kicker on the roster so until they add somebody which wouldn't be if they did Zach I mean they've had every opportunity to sign veterans right free agents mm -hmm. and guys that are out there they have not done that yet so if there is any kind of a motivation to either compete have some competition for McManus or supplant him. It's probably the draft. Once you get to the draft, if nothing happens, then then forget about it even happening in 2023. I'm trying to think, you know, uh, with Mike Westoff leading the Sp Bronco special teams as the advisor, what he did when he was the coordinator in New York, you know, years and years ago, they had like Doug Bryan, who they signed as a free agent. They had John Hall, who I believe was a free agent. So if you look at history, maybe they do bring in competition. Whether they draft a kicker, though, if they had more picks to burn this year, I'd say it's a possibility, but they only have five. They have to make it count. I could see one coming in, Chad, as a UDFA in the, you know, the eighth round, so to speak, to provide some competition. But like you said, if they get out of the first couple rounds or you know the third, fourth, fifth round and McManus is still the only surviving kicker, there's, there's probably a good reason for that. Indeed. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, let's grab George here. Jumping in. Appreciate you, George. Great pod tonight, he says, and every night, the best pod. You're very kind. On the air, even if we all don't see eye to eye, Denver Bronx for life, MHH for life. How boring would it be to listen to a podcast where everyone's just nodding their heads and in full and perfect agreement 100% of the time? That does not sound interesting to me. I personally um, hate podcasts like that. I don't know how many yeah. you listen to, but I listen to quite a bit, and I hate when it's all the same opinion and everything's one brain. It's no fun. You need that dialectic, that debate, and it has to be genuine. In other words, you know, if you listen to some political podcasts as an example, this is I'm only mentioning this as an example. 
uh, you can tell when there's a conversation taking place where both people espousing a take and trying to assert their opinions actually are doing so in good faith with an open mind to perhaps being wrong when they listen to the other person's point of view. And that applies to a lot of sports podcasts too, but I hate listening to the ones where it's either very fake, like, you know, pivot stuff, not pivot. What is it? Wedge driving stuff like on radio where it, they are arguing, but you can tell it's not real. Yeah, Neither one of them really feel, or at least one of them doesn't feel the way they are. They're just doing it for the sake of content for us. We do try to keep it 100 here. Miguel, love you, big dogs. Great to see you. Uh, appreciate the, the support and Michaela give our best to Cooper. We understand that he was able to do some show and tell about his appearance on the show last week. Very cool at school. Thank you guys for being awesome. Having us on the show. She says, just wanted to say thank you. MHH for life. Thank you for being a part of this uh, community and supporting us, throwing down supers means the world to us. I hope you know that. Yeah. Michaela, you killed it. Appreciate having you and Cooper on as well. Anytime you want to come out in the future, we would love to have you back. Absolutely. Uh, we're excited <laughs> because we've got some, uh, some other great guests lined up for April from the community. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, Zach, let's grab this from Chris. Lots of interesting points and comments. What about signing Robbie Gold? I'm not positive, Zach. Thank you for the question, Chris, and being with us tonight. I'm not positive if Gold is available. I'm, I'm not going to lie and pretend like I monitor every single uh, transaction when it comes to kickers. So I'm not, I'm not sure on that. I don't think he signed. Scott can probably verify that. But even if he's not, I'm looking right now, he's 41. So he would be just a fill-in. I don't know how old the Broncos want to get at that position. You might be just better off hanging with McManus and hoping that better coaching, like everything else, can make him a better player, more consistent anyway. I want to circle back, though, to what Miguel, his point was, which is he said, I'm probably in the minority, but Sean Payton is more valuable than the first-round pick that Denver gave up to get him because he's a known commodity compared to an unknown. And that was really at first when the, the possibility Zach of the Broncos, maybe hiring Sean Payton was entering the, the Broncos country zeitgeist. We were like, well, if you look at the field and you got maybe a Jim Harbaugh blustering about leaving Michigan, I don't know. And you could get him without giving up a first round pick, you know, but, it was really actually Scott who laid it out for me in a way that I went, yeah, that actually makes sense, which was you traded Bradley Chubb for a first round pick. How many of your first round picks that you actually make and look at Broncos history to see how many of them turn into bona fide starters, bona fide pro bowlers, guys that even garner a second contract and then wrap your brain around this. Would you last season, if you could have at the trade deadline traded Bradley Chubb for Sean Payton and he's your coach now, would you have done it? There's probably very few Bronco fans under the sun who would not have pulled the trigger on such a thing. So that's really all it is. You ultimately traded Bradley Chubb for Sean Payton, and that's a trade I'll take all day long and thrice on Sunday. Exactly, and Scott's absolutely right to lay it out that way. I want to take it a step further. How many games, this is a legitimate question, not rhetorical, how many games did Bradley Chubb win the Broncos single-handedly? Can I even think of one? Can you chat? I can't. I can guarantee you, though, that Sean Payton himself won the Broncos a hell of a lot more games. That's what it comes down to for me. Plus, you were going to lose him anyway at the end of the season. I mean, they didn't even keep Draymond Jones. They weren't going to keep Bradley Chubb. So I'm trying to think, though, your your honest question about was there a game where he like just took it over and you don't win that game without Where was Chubb? his Von Miller closeout game? Definitely not last year, although he had a couple of solid games in the first quarter of the season. Definitely not the year prior. Maybe his rookie year, but you'd have to really go back and examine every single one of those games uh, and try and refresh your memory, maybe even watch the, the game film on it. But your point is not lost on me. There's not one that comes to mind. So... If you have to even, you know, rack your brain, what does that say? If you, Von Miller, how many games can we think of where he closed it out? He took the game over. He won a freaking championship for the Broncos single-handedly uh, pretty much. Sean Payton, though, of the trade-off, I mean, no one can argue that. You can argue Russell Wilson's contract or George Payton's acuity as general manager. You can argue that the Broncos got so much better by essentially trading Bradley Chubb for Sean Payton. <laughs> um, Keith says, all right, so we're, you're getting back to the – agreeing about everything is boring, right? 
And by the way, when you guys disagree with us, we don't take that as a shot across the I bow. love it. We love the fact that everybody has an opinion. We want to hear. And for me, honestly, I love it. You can pick the topic. It can be football takes, Zach. It can be, you know, do you believe in God? It can be your politics. It can be whatever. I want to hear the opposing view on whatever mine is, whatever my stance on an issue is. I want to hear the opposing view because I want to test. Do I believe this? Right. Do I really believe what I'm saying? Is it does it still taste good? Does it still ring true? So, Keith, he says, here's my we don't agree. Lloyd Cushenberry is better than you give him credit. And I expect it to show out this year. By God, I hope you're right, Keith. I do. And I think, um, you know, it's easy on a podcast to maybe minimize all the work and toil and blood and sweat and sacrifice that an individual player puts into to doing his thing. We certainly don't mean to do that in the case of Cushenberry. But aside from his availability thing, which was interrupted last year, last year finally – he got hurt and he had to miss time. And then kind of Wally pipped himself out of the lineup because his play wasn't so hot. I maintain though, here's where I'll say, uh, Zach, in response to Keith, I'm hopeful. I'm seriously hoping you're right on this. And I'm really pinning those hopes on the Sean Payton effect. So if Sean Payton believes that's our center, then he must see something like what you see, Keith. And if that's the case, it's good for the Broncos for Kush to work out. Listen, I, I agree with Chad. I want Cushenberry to be good. I want him to be the center of the Broncos drafted him to be. And I was on draft night on Twitter, you know, screaming in all caps, the Broncos got that good Cush. And I stood by him after that rookie year when he was rated. Remember, it was like the 33rd ranked center at a 32 by PFF. I thought, okay, maybe in Butch Berry's scheme, more athletic, more of a zone blocking scheme, he can really shine. But you turn on the film, we highlighted one play I put on Twitter where he literally got bulldozed, him and Dalton Reisner both. I just didn't see it last year. I, I I trust my eyes and I trust what my brain is telling me, not what my heart is telling me. Can he work out? We'll find out, like Chad said, because Sean Payton, the one consistent thing he had in New Orleans was good offensive line play. And if we know anything about Lloyd Cushenberry that's really not up for debate, that is, you know, when you think about what his reputation as a player is or even what it was coming out as a prospect from LSU, big football brain, really – strong work ethic. So if you give him some of the other tools to help him unlock the talent that has not been as productive as you'd like it to be, those can make the difference. Nick saying, uh, what's up, bro? Good to see you, Nick. Thanks for always keeping it 100. That's why I've been sucked into your pod. There is no other pod or YouTube channel out there like MHH. You're very kind, brother. We're stoked to have you. It's been really cool uh, getting to know you, especially over the last month or two, big dog. Uh, Tom, Thank you for the super chat. So consistent. This is why to us, he is a Mount Rushmore super chat superstar. Every single stream, just about Tom's there and he's throwing down. So thanks, big dog. He says, guys, what's up? I want Kush to be great, he says, but I'm still drafting a center early. So yeah, it's like, hey, I like, um, you know, I want Peyton Manning to be great, but I'm still drafting Brock Osweiler in the second round. That's not really a slight on Peyton Manning, Zach, it's more of just hedging your bets. And when you bet on something, you're showing faith, right? When you bet on something, man, you are showing faith. So it's not like you're, by then hedging, you're you're necessarily um, casting doubt or a lack of faith on that faith you already showed. But in the case of Lloyd Cushenberry, you know, better to have and not need than need and not have. Exactly. Exactly. What I was going to say, it's perfect for the Broncos the way they set it up. They're going into the draft not needing to take a center early if they don't want to, not needing to take any position. They pretty much have everything filled out. Cushenberry, they sign Kyle Fuller, they have Luke Wattenberg. It's not the best collection of three, but it's at least three bodies that can compete for that starting job. Great, though. Can Cushenberry be great? Let's take baby steps. The thing about him I'm apprehensive about, Sean Payton likes big, burly offensive linemen, road graders. That's why he signed Ben Powers and Mike McGlinchey. Lloyd Cushenberry is not that. You talked about his football brain, but he doesn't really have it physicality. The dominance you want to see from a center, he hasn't shown. Hopefully, though, it comes out. Thank you, Tom. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you um, for the support, though, Big Dog. Michael Davis in the house as well with a super chat. And, you know, he's he's been helping us keep the conversation going all night long. We appreciate you, Michael. He says, Priest, either of you 
are you surprised that Dalton Reisner and former Bronco Connor McGovern are still available? Much love from Hawaii, gents. Another great – so many awesome mavens from our community are from Hawaii. Hope to see you in Colorado this October. Okay, bud. We'll uh, look forward to that. But, Zach, I, I'll i admit, and maybe you and I disagree on this a little bit, as much as Dalton Reisner has underwhelmed the last, let's say, season and a half as a starter, I didn't think he would languish this long. Like, when the Broncos made it clear that they were going a different direction, signing Ben Powers on day one, it was like, okay, I did expect Dalton Reisner to get scooped up sometime in that first week. He's still out there. So he's either asking for too much money or like he really is not viewed as anything more than a, Hey, we need an extra guard because our starter got hurt on the fifth day of training camp. Call that kid from Kansas state. That would not surprise me at all. If Reisner wanted too much money, I think he overvalues himself and what he brings to the table. He wants to be paid like Ben powers, for example, but he's nowhere near the talent of Ben powers. And we talked about the play where Cushenberry got ran over. We showed that play, you know, about a month ago on here. If you watch the play, though, Reisner and Cushenberry both get owned, but Reisner is literally blocking Cushenberry on the ground. He has no idea what he's doing, and he was lost all too often last year. He's also not the most physical lineman. I am not surprised at all that he's still toiling. McGovern, we don't know too much about based on how his career ended in New York, what will happen there with injuries. I thought the Broncos might give him a call, but there's a good reason that they haven't yet, I guess. Yeah, I think he would have fit well with this scheme too. But Michael, thank you, big dog. Hopefully we're able to to get to your topic, uh, your answer anyway. Clayton, great to see you, big dog. He says, great way to come home and listen to you guys. Smash the like button and share. He has been in Florida having a blast. Uh, we're going to put the – we're going to put in the hard work this offseason. I smell, he says, a 13-win season. Well, for what it's worth, Zach, the uh, initial – bookmakers set the over under for Denver at eight and a half wins. So what are you taking? You taking the over, you taking the under. I, I love smelling what Clayton's cooking here. I'd love a 13 win season, but I'll be more realistic. I think they're going to be about nine and eight, 10 and seven. Realistically, it's going to be an endeavor for Sean Payton to come in and really undo more than a half decade of futility, incompetence, and so on and so forth. But they're still going to be a contending team. And if things break right, no reason why they can't get into double digits, Chad. Well, and even if you think to yourself, well, gosh, that's nine wins. That's a four-game improvement over last season. Yeah. And you know what? It maybe could be more because I actually agree with you, right, 100% on what you just said. It could be more, but you got to remember, Sean Payton is competing in a stacked AFC West. Sure. Even forget about the Raiders who have – what is it now, Zach? Is it six or seven straight? I, I've lost count Too now many. of the Raiders' streak, but – even set them to the side because we don't know what shape they're going to take this year. Uh, you're dealing with Kansas City. You're dealing with who's got their own long dating back to the Super Bowl season for the for the Denver Broncos winning streak. And you've got uh, on the rise still playoff uh, caliber Justin Herbert and the L.A. Chargers. So that, you know, you're probably going to split in the best in the best possible way. Like if all your wildest dreams for the Broncos come true and they're playoff relevant that they probably split with the Chiefs if all your dreams came true, all right, realistically. And maybe they, you know, split with the Chargers as well. And even split with the Raiders. It's still a tough division. For whatever reason, man, as much as we clown on um, Josh McDaniels, he freaking has Denver's number, dude, uh, unfortunately. That changes this year. I, I mean, the coaching difference, hopefully the quarterbacking difference. I'm not a Jimmy G guy. I think the Raiders actually got worse at quarterback going from Carter Garoppolo. My hot take is they sweep Vegas this year and that streak and also split with Kansas City. And if they want to be a playoff team, they have to win those games. There's no reason why they can't be, though, if they get that bump in coaching like we think they will. Lawrence saying, in the end, the truth stands tall. That's why MHH got it all, baby. Hey, a poet, and maybe you did know it. I don't know. Thanks, bro. Keith, if Peyton, Sean Peyton, wins a Super Bowl this year, making him the first coach to do it with two teams, does he retire? I'll worry about that later. I doubt he would, to be honest with you, Keith. If it were to be this year, I doubt it. What is he, 59, I want to say, off the top of my head? 
Believe um, it. No, I think he realized that where he's at in his life, uh, he's not to a point where, I mean, everybody, regardless of gender, okay, when they reach that retirement age, if they've been working their whole lives, it's a big adjustment to go from grinding every day and, you know, having duties and responsibilities and things that, you know, you're striving for and the search and the hunt and the, the whole thing to all of a sudden there is nothing that way. And, and mo a lot of people, they'll get depressed, they'll get anxious, they'll find a try, you know, if people who are successful at navigating retirement, Zach, they find other things with which mm -hmm. to pour that pursuit and that passion. Uh, but in Sean Payton's case, even though he's wealthy many times over, he found out last year after he stepped away from the Saints that, gosh, life's much better when I'm actually coaching football. So I don't think he's anywhere quite yet ready to retire, even if he hoists the Lombardi in year one. I think he got the itch back for sure after being at Fox. He didn't want to be on the sidelines. He actually missed coaching. But it's a good problem to have, though. And raise your hand if you would trade one, only one season of Sean Payton for a Lombardi trophy. I think we'd all uh, take that trade fairly easy. Here's the better question, though. If they win a Super Bowl in year one, does that mean Russell Wilson could retire? That's a huge, huge comeback story. You're talking about a guy who was clowned more than – any other athlete I've seen in recent memory going from the outhouse to the penthouse, hoisting a Lombardi trophy in year one of Sean Payton. What a magical uh, dream to have. I think it would honestly, and Mike's saying 11 and six, we'll see. We'll see, big dog. I, I think it would honestly depend on the, the complexion of how they win the Super Bowl. For example, John Elway wins his first Super Bowl at, what was he, 35 or 36, but the Broncos – they were just that team that wouldn't go away that year. 97, wild card team, defied all the odds, got to the Super Bowl to face the defending world champion, Green Bay Packers, favored. They were a juggernaut, and yet the Broncos snuck in and got him. John Elway, is he going to retire? Is he going to retire? He doesn't retire. He comes back, and that second year, the Broncos weren't a fringe playoff caliber team that caught momentum at the right time and went all the way. They were now that 800-pound gorilla, king of the hill, and they sustain that like they maintain that level of dominance and it's like if you watch zach the uh uh what was it what's it called america's team on the second super bowl for the broncos there's a there's a i'm gonna paraphrase mark schlereth where when they got to the super bowl that year it wasn't like all right let's go show them what we've got and hopefully we can upset the world no he's like it was our duty because of they had become the leviathan they had become that 800 pound gorilla. It's our duty to go out here and handle the Falcons. And then John always said, adios. Now juxtapose that. And then I'm going to serve this back to you to how Peyton Manning hung up his cleats exactly. in a season where they were so close four years in a row uh, to, to getting that Lombardi didn't work out. Finally, it all comes together, but he's falling apart, right? He, he was, he wouldn't have been able to survive another season, gets that trophy retires if Russ were to win it in year one with Peyton, it, his story would probably fall somewhere in between those two. Um, so I would think he would probably keep playing. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the Broncos did carry Peyton to that Super Bowl win, and it uh, could be the same for Russell Wilson. And also, Scott makes a good point that he has so much money on the table. Why would he walk away from that? I'm just saying, though, it's a good problem to have and a good problem to think about. Most definitely. Um, the swashbuckler himself, Gary Palmer, with a very generous super chat. Great to see you, Thank big you, dog. Gary. Hope you're doing well. He says, hey, Chad, Zach, and Scott, I think maybe Sean Payton knows something I don't, but he will see it on the field if he needs to make a move. Sean has an ace up his sleeve, I'm betting. Go Broncos and buck them. Yeah, I mean, I would like to think he knows a lot of things. I don't know when it comes to the game. In fact, he's probably forgotten more than I'll ever know. Not probably, I guarantee he has. And I've been a fan of the game for as long as I can remember and studying it every single day uh, as a career for over 10 years, he, what he knows, his level of grind and expertise and talent and all that, it's on a whole other level. So I think that's partly why, you know, until I have reason not to Zach, I am in that posture of in Sean, we trust. Yeah, and Scott thinks he's talking about a center, Gary. Uh, you know, ace up his sleeve when it comes to the center position, but probably. Uh, you know, my uh, macro answer to this, Gary, is the ace up Sean Payton sleeve is Sean Payton himself. 
he realizes how good of a coach he is, how accomplished he is, and what he's taking on with Russell Wilson, the Broncos franchise. They're all going to get better. I don't mean to you know keep harping on the same point or overdoing it, but they're all going to get better by the virtue of good coaching stability on that level. They haven't had that since Gary Kubiak, Chad. So that's why it's so important. They made that trade. They made that hire because he will change the whole culture of the franchise more than any player could. Well said. Taylor, thank you for the super chat, big dog. It's great to see you tonight. Your opinion, he asks, on Philip Lindsay signing with the XFL with the Seattle Sea Dragons. Sea Dragons, yeah. Um, yeah, so that he's hoping that's how he can recapture the attention of NFL teams. Zach, I think it's a damn shame that that's what yeah. he's been relegated yeah. to, unfortunately. Still, 500-something carries as a pro, yet to fumble, let alone lose a fumble. Um, so... Hey, whatever he's got to do to keep the flame burning, I'm for it. And if his he and his representative, Zach, think that's the best thing for him right now, then do it. Is that really the best the XFL could do, though? You know, the, the same league that brought us He Hate Me can do Sea Dragons for the Seattle team. It sounds like they're trolling the Seahawks. I, You and I, Chad, agree a billion percent on Philip Lindsay. It's a shame he's not in the NFL. It's a shame, I think, what happened with the Broncos. He wasn't given... Um, a chance to really thrive and be what he can be. And that's a game breaker. So hopefully he kills it in the XFL and he has a family now. And it's different than when he was first entering the NFL. He was still kind of a kid, but he has to provide in some way. And hopefully he does that in uh, the, the rocks league. I like this uh, comment from Pearl. She says, my dad, sorry, Tom, one sec. My dad used to say a hungry team finds a way. I feel this way this coming year. Exactly. You know, especially if you have the tools, uh, to find out the way and you actually have a compass or a, someone who can read the compass in the case of Sean Payton. Tom, he says with another super chat, thank you, bro. Loved free agency. Just need a veteran corner to be safe. So let's do a quick uh, recap here of if the Broncos went to war tomorrow, what does cornerback look like? Pat Sertan, cornerback one, you're all pro. Kwan Williams, you're nickel. Uh, Damari Mathis in year two, probably right now projects as that second guy boundary. And then behind them, Jaquan McMillian, uh, he's saying Bassey, you know, so they are lacking in a proven fourth guy into the fray. Maybe a veteran would Tom allow him to play it safe, but that might be a position they draft. I guess there's also that corner from last year, late the seventh round pick. What was his name, Zach? Um, Fayon Hicks. Thank you. Yeah, it's a bunch of unproven or relatively unknown players. I'm looking at the uh, the open market right now. There's some name players available. Marcus Peters. I'm going on OTC, though. So if they've signed, they've signed since then. William Jackson, Shaquille Griffin, Ronald Darby, who the Broncos cut, still available. Uh, Anthony Brown intrigues me. Every time I watched him in Dallas, he was pretty sticky as an outside cornerback, but I don't know his injury history. I feel like, though, Chad, if they haven't signed one by now, they're probably content going into the draft with who they have on the roster. We'll see. Phil, can anyone explain why the rule change allowing the number zero to be used? Requests? I don't know. I don't know, Zach. Um, I'm still getting used to, you know, yeah, the different numbers yeah. like Randy Gregory, a rush linebacker wearing five, yeah. you know, like I, I never, it, it might sound petty or whatever, but maybe too traditionalist. I don't know, but I did. I wasn't a fan of the NFL loosening up their rules on the numbers that can be used just because again, I like, I like the tradition and maybe it's because my, my brain has been trained over decades to, you know, Oh, well, they're on defense. If that dude's wearing a five, he's probably a linebacker. If that dude's wearing a, you know, et cetera, makes it a little bit easier on you. Now it's like no way to know. If you, so you got to know your stuff, especially because you can't just take a guess based on what jersey they're wearing. I'm old fashioned, just like you. I don't like the fact that there's no like dichotomy between uh, broadcasts anymore. So an AFC team not necessarily will be on CBS like it used to be an NFC for Fox. I'm kind of old school and traditionalist as well. I did see, though, that if there was a candidate for number zero, it would be Albert O just because of his name. But we'll see how the jersey shakes out. That's true. I also liked the old way 
that it was a clear like demarcation separation from college because college would wear all kinds of different. You'd see quarterbacks wearing 22 or whatever. Um, And I like that about the league. Taylor, does Denver draft quarterback or undrafted quarterback as QB three go Denver Broncos? Um, That's a good Good question. question. That's a good question. So again, to just set the table. I'll set it up for you, Zach Russell Wilson, your QB one Broncos went and spent decent quarterback two money Mm -hmm. to sign Jarrett Stidham. What do you think they do? I feel like this also pertains to the kicker answer I had, where if the Broncos were to have more draft picks than not just five, they can burn one on a quarterback, but they might just be content waiting for uh, the UDFA round to uh, commence. Don't they still have Jared Guarantano, though? Didn't he sign a, a futures contract after the season? If he did, they'd still have three quarterbacks, and they could be able to just go to war with that. But Yeah, he's on the roster. So do they need a developmental guy? I feel like Sean Payton would want to handpick someone to put in the pipeline, but can you burn a draft pick on one? I don't I don't know. I mean, if Sean Payton, quote, wants his guy, if you're of the mind that maybe Russ is not his ideal guy for the long, long haul, I mean, he's, sure. his, he's his guy for now, but if, if you're of the mind that he's not for the long haul, um, well – he got to kind of split the difference anyway, Zach, in being able to decide what backup the Broncos pursued and spent money on. And so, you know, if things go sideways with Russ, Sean does have Jarrett Stidham, a guy he hand selected for that job. So I don't know, but yes, uh, Guarantano on the roster officially sport number 11, six foot four, two twenty, out of Washington state. I was going to say, you brought up, I thought you were leading to the point where if they take a quarterback in the third or fourth round, that's a pretty clear indication that maybe Sean Payton isn't as sold on Russell Wilson as uh, we all think he is. But I don't think they're going to go that direction, Chad. They have bigger fish to fry than quarterback three. I agree. I agree. Uh, Chris, chances in the house. Appreciate it, bro. Says Chad Zach Scott, still the best in the business. You're a prince. We really do appreciate the support and the the kind words, my friend, but we are at 47 minutes. So we're about out of time. I'm doing a quick, um, we got a D bomb. Oh yes. Oh, wow. Whoa. Uh, lady D number two, top rope, super chat tonight. Flexing, throwing down. Love you. Appreciate you. She says, what are your guys thoughts on a uniform change? I'm okay with it, but I don't want our helmets changed. The horse on the helmet looks posh. Plus, since we went with that helmet, we've won Super Bowls, MHH for life. That's right. There is some, uh, you know, luck, superstition, you know, at at play here with the old school D, which, look, I loved it. Um, they got close, but no cigar four times in the Super Bowl. The first year they're sporting the new, they win the freaking Super Bowl, right? So you're like, okay. And now, as Deanna says, every Super Bowl victory – since then has been with that on the helmet. But we learned last week, Zach, from uh, team president, um, Damani Leach, that although the helmet and uniform is going to stay the same this year, there is a possibility that they could roll out a new helmet design to be Mm -hmm. used for two games that would ostensibly anyway, uh, be different than their regular helmet and their color rush helmet. So, they're doing what they call uh, surveying with fan groups, which I can only interpret to mean, Zach, that they already have some design ideas, and so they're testing them with fans via survey, different options. What do you think of this one? What do you think of that one? Uh, so I'm cool. Honestly, Lady D, I feel you on the, you know, kind of the superstitious aspect of it, but it's been 25, 26 years. I suck at math, but, you know, that's a quarter century. I think the Broncos would be justified to shake up their jersey and their uniform, the whole thing, a little bit. Um, I'm going to have a pretty short answer. I, I'm not 
one way or the other for the uniforms. I could take it or leave it. If they want to change the uniform, they can change it. I prefer, again, I'm a traditionalist. I'm old fashioned. I would leave well enough alone. They have storied history in that uniform, but they're going to take like Chad was laying out a baby step and uh, they're going to introduce a new helmet. And you know what, honestly, from a capitalistic standpoint, fans based on what I've seen on Twitter, it's always a debate. They will eat up the new inventory the Broncos put out. So I could see why they would go that route, especially with the Walmart's in control. And think about this too. Things have been bad for seven years. So anything you can throw into the um, equation to kind of hack the universe algorithm relative yeah. to the Broncos <laughs> fortunes, throw it out there, man. What do you got yeah. to lose at this point? Uh, Michaela, the Duchess throwing down. Thank, Thank you. It's so you. great to see you. We appreciate you more than you know. She says, will we miss Michael OJ Moody? I think we need one corner maybe in free agency or the draft what do you think is that i don't think the broncos missed him when he was on the roster he didn't ever do much to justify that third round investment he joined that long line of brennan langley and uh i isaac yadam isaac yadam is that his right that's right i can't even think of his name anymore but they do need, i think to the previous question as well a little more reinforcement in the secondary but if they haven't signed anyone and there's so much talent on the open market still it would lead me to believe they have big designs uh, for the draft. Indeed. It's going to be fun. Um, but guys, we have loved talking with you. We're going to dip on out of here. Don't leave quite yet, though, because we do have some messages and one announcement. So stick with us. That was another great installment, as always, of the MHH podcast. If you're not doing so, follow us on Twitter at the MHH pod. You can also follow the main account on Twitter at Mile High Huddle, Chad at Chad and Jensen, myself at Kelberman NFL, and Scott at Scout Kennedy. If you guys want some merch like you see Chad rocking, I'm rocking, all of our podcast hosts rocking, you know where to find it by now. But if not, MHHmerch.com, be sure you peruse that when you can. And also, if you haven't, go to Facebook.com slash my little pod be sure you're liking that page following that page and if you're on instagram follow us at mile underscore high underscore huddle and guys and gals as always my call to you to leave a five-star review on apple podcast for your chance to win some merch each and every single month but if anything please heed my call subscribe like and share this video and every video you see on the mhh channel it really helps us grow and reach more broncos fans just like you Indeed, love and respect to each and every one of you. <clears throat> Pardon me, a special shout out to these great supporters and Super Chat superstars on YouTube. We've got uh, Zachary Smaus, a.k.a. Unique Prepping, the Lady D, Deanna Hendry, Michaela Israel, uh, the Duchess, Michaela Parker, Tom, Michael Davis, Gary Palmer, the Swashbuckler, Taylor Christensen, Chris Chances, much love and respect. And then on Facebook tonight, Phil McLaughlin down in Tucson proving the Broncos country is not a geographic location. It is a state of being. Lawrence Rivera, Clayton Heron, Keith Brugman, Mike Reno, and George Fox. And across the pond, Marcus Lewis Henna. Much love and respect. And guys uh, and gals, on our giveaway contest raffle for March, we're going to be doing that on Thursday. All right? So make sure you are in attendance. We will do the raffle on YouTube. We'll do a raffle on Facebook. And the winner, of course, gets to pick a Broncos jersey that they want. We'll get it shipped out to them as a thank you for all the support. So make sure you do not miss Thursday night's show. But, of course, we'll be back tomorrow night. So we'll, there's some time in between now and then to, to talk shop. But it'll be fun. So love you. We'll talk to you soon. I don't know if we flashed just while I was going through my spiel, but James Richard jumped in with a super at the last minute. Uh, Denver will win in spectacular fashion. Uh, we'll see, but we're both very optimistic as Broncos country should be. Thank you so much, James, for hopping in with us tonight. But we're gonna that's going to do it for us. We'll be back on tomorrow night. Take care, and as always, go Broncos. <laughs>